And also, if you're wearing earrings or big old uh, bones through your ear, take those out first. Take those out first, please. I know I've done it myself. I've got a big old bone in my ear. I had to take it out. Otherwise, it's very uncomfortable. Welcome back. We hope you've enjoyed all the projects in this season so far. Let's go ahead and get started into this episode's project, Creating Digital Music. Hi, I'm your host, Timothy Kimo Bryan, and you have tuned into Kimo's Den of Iniquity, where we create more than we consume. Today's episode will be doing double duty, as we'll be previewing music for our next podcast, Gray Heroes. No one gets out clean. Coming soon to a podcaster, uh, podcatcher uh, near you. Uh, today's project is entitled Soothing the Savage Breast, Digital Music Creation. Now, what does Soothing the Savage Breast mean? Well, for me, music has always played a pivotal role in my life, on uh, my day-to-day activities. I always have music or a podcast going on in the back room at work or while I'm putting up uh, show notes or uh, putting my kids to bed. Uh, the Savage Breast can be uh, anything that interrupts your peace and calm in your mind and in your heart. And music seems to uh, make it better, uh, for me at least, and it, start, and it starts my ju- creative juices flowing. So I do suckle from that breast as much as I can now. I know that's a bad pun there, but I, I, think, I think if you think about it, it's part of the uh, creativity that we need to uh, nourish in each and every one of us. Now, a little background on me. For about 10 years, I've been using this program called Magix, M-A-G-I-X. Now, they're not sponsoring this show, and you'll be able to hook up with their website uh, in the show link here. But I've been working with them now for about 10 years, making digital music. And the great thing about this project is um, you just have to have a basic understanding of music. Um, That basically means whatever sounds good to you. And you need to be brave enough to make wonderful mistakes. All right? Let's make those mistakes. Sometimes they're absolutely fabulous. And we need to go ahead and be bold and make those mistakes. Now, this program, uh, Magix, is based on loops and digital instruments. And our main focus will be on the loops uh, as they've already been created for you. So there's nothing for you to necessarily start from scratch on. And we'll go into some uh, interesting uh, song structures that can uh, be used right out of the box. Now, folks, here's where we get a little expensive. Okay, you can go nuts on this if you really want to, um, depending on your interest level and what you want to do with it. Now, the first thing you have to have is you got to have a laptop, uh, something that's got uh, a lot of good speed to it, not junked up with a bunch of bloatware. Um, Basically, you want something that has a good processor in it, a good fast processor, a quad core processor. Um, maybe if, uh, you know, you're listening to this podcast 20 years from now and you'll be like a quad core. Oh my God. That's, you know, that's, uh, on my, uh, on my baby monitor or something like that. Um, you, you for t- today's date in 2018, you know, a good quad core processor should be able to handle most music programs out there. Um, you also want to get a copy of Magix. Uh, you can get that downloaded uh, on, from their website. And to start off with, you can start off with uh, about 60 bucks on that. So if you already have a laptop, you're halfway, you're halfway home, kids. Uh, grab uh, Magix and uh, you know, invest that 60 bucks because you're going to be making a lot of music with this. It's a lot of fun. I also recommend a good pair of headphones to cover your ear. Now, myself, I use Audio Technica 50Xs, and that'll run you about 100, 150 bucks. Uh, we just recently had the Prime Day, so if uh, you know if you're listening to this, and it's in July, uh, after July 20, no, I'm sorry, after July 18th or 16th, whatever it was, um, you missed out on Prime Day. Sorry, you could have saved some money on that. But you can go ahead and wait till the next Prime Day, or just go ahead and plunk down the 100, 150 bucks and grab those headphones. You want to get something that's going to cover your ears because you want to block out everything else. So if you've got kids in your life like I do, or cats, or noises, or anything like that, go ahead and block that out for yourself. 
invest in a nice pair because you're going to be wearing them for a while. You want them to be nice and comfy on your ears. And also, if you're wearing earrings or big old uh, bones through your ear, take those out first. Take those out first, please. I know. I've done it myself. I've got a big old bone in my ear. I had to take it out. Otherwise, it's very uncomfortable. So make sure that you're doing that for yourself. So basically, laptop, if you already got one, you're already set and good to go. Um, second thing is uh, the program, Magic's about 60 bucks. And third thing, headphones. Now, there are other programs out there. I've tried a few others myself. I've tried uh, Sonar. Um, I've tried Fruity Loops. Uh, even GarageBand uh, for your Apple users is out there for you. I like Magic's because it's the first one I used uh, many moons ago. Uh, and I just enjoy the uh, the format to it, uh, the layout of it, and uh, and what they're trying to do with it, which is basically trying to get you to make music. So uh, the time to do this uh, project, simple project, about 45 minutes. You knock out a song in 45 minutes. Now, the demo that I'm going to be playing for you here, yeah, it took me about... Mm, half hour, 45 minutes uh, to uh, put some stuff together for you. Um, a, a short song, you know, a three to five minute song might take you about 45 minutes to an hour uh, your first couple of times out. But uh, after that, you'll uh, catch on to the shortcuts and you'll read all the tutorials. I'm sure like we all do, pause for laughter on that one. But um, you definitely want to uh, take a look at some of the tutorials there. I'm not going to go super deep into this for you. I'm going to warn you right now. I'm not going super deep into this because... I want to pique your interest. I want you to get interested in it. Now let's go back to the actual premise behind this whole episode is music. Okay. We all love music. It calms us. It emboldens us. And generally it makes us feel good. I mean, you know, have you ever thought about making your own music? You hear it all the time. You go to the stores. It's on the radio. Um, you've got it on your Amazon player. You got it on your iPad, or iCloud. Uh, your iPhone, it, music is all around us. Um, I was just watching, <laughs> I was just watching some Sesame Street and it was talking about nature. And one of the guys on there was saying, he's listening to a cricket going, Oh, it's nature singing to us. If you think about it, yeah, nature is singing to us through the crickets. Sometimes you need to take a shotgun and sing louder than the crickets, uh, scare them off. But that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to, we're going to uh, approach this with. You know, it, it, uh, music create is uh, a creative outlet for us. It inspires creativity. I listen to a lot of music to get inspired to do something creative, whether that be painting or making music or writing poetry or writing a novel or uh, a bevy of the other projects that I have. Pretty much every project that you've seen me do here, uh, I've had music playing in the background. The ammo uh, crate uh, boxes I had... Uh, I had uh, some music playing in the background for that. Um, that was the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Son of a Bitch song by uh, Nathaniel Braithwaite and the uh, Night Sweats. That's what it was. Had that playing while I'm making the ammo box in my garage. It was fantastic. People walked by and they were dancing right along with me. Why not? How did I get my start in music? I always like to be transparent and let you know a little bit about me. So that way when you see me in the street, you can go, hey, I know you. Well, I've been a musician on and off since I was about six. Uh, I got my first guitar uh, from my older brother, Pete, uh, who's a bass and a guitar player for various bands back in my good old hometown of Rockford, Illinois, screw capital of the world. And uh, my older brother, uh, Mike, my other older brother, Mike, uh, I'm the youngest of six kids. <laughs> but my older brother, Mike, he uh, went on to play a tuba in the middle school band and high school orchestra. And uh, eventually, like any annoying little brother, I followed his suit. And uh, I also played uh, middle uh, bass guitar in middle school, uh, mainly because uh, I could do the uh, night court theme uh, for the band. And, you know, the do, 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 do. No, that's Barney Miller. Whoops, sorry. Um, the night court theme. Can't think of it off the top of my head. But I could play also Barney Miller, too. And uh, we were doing a whole thing on TV uh, theme songs. They had Barney Miller and night court. And I was the guy that could play both of them. So they had me do it. I've been watching a lot of Barney Miller lately. Go tune into Barney Miller. It, TV shows that you're watching have music in them. Come on now. You can do this. All right? Why not? And make it easy on yourself. You don't have to learn an instrument. You can learn these loops and knock it out for yourself. Hand it off. You know, Back in the uh, 80s and 90s, we gave out mixtapes to folks. 
you can do the same thing. Uh, except, except you're not taking other people's music. You're making your own and making it in for somebody. So anyways, I played uh, bass guitar in middle school. And when I was in the Air Force, I accidentally, I don't know how, but I accidentally got conned into playing uh, baritone for the marching band uh, at my tech school for the United States Air Force. They said, hey, who can play a musical instrument? And I raised my hand, not thinking like an idiot. And they're like, okay, you're in the marching band. I grew up uh, outside of Chicago uh, in Rockford, Illinois, uh, in the uh, from the uh, 70s uh, till the early 90s. Listened to a lot of uh, house music uh, coming out of Chicago. And I'd visit my brother Mike at his frat house uh, every weekend. I was at the uh, frat house uh, in Chicago uh, with my brother. And uh, I was totally entranced by the turntables and the artistry that happened there. I mean, people scratching up records and taking music that had already been there and making something brand new out of it. Um, I was also interested in the girls that came by and um, paid a great deal of attention to the DJ. And, and folks, yes, uh, music can grab the attention of the opposite sex. And that's why a lot of people get into it. And hey, if that's your reason, hey, go for it. By all means, if you're trying to um, get your groove thing on by playing some groovy, funky music, by all means do it. Use protection, please. All right? Just wrap it up and, you know, put it away. Uh, later on, I, I grabbed my own stack of records and, and taught myself how to do these same uh, tricks and played music mostly for friends, uh, making no money. But yeah, the big thing was I had a lot of fun. So I, I was doing this uh, while I was going to high school. Uh, then in the Air Force, uh, I was in uh, Abilene, Texas. And uh, we'd go up to uh, Dallas, uh, up to Deep Ellum and go out to all the record stores there and come back from uh, Abilene and, you know, and spin records uh, on the weekends because there wasn't a whole hell of a lot to do. There's a coffee shop, which was great, which you've heard me talk about in other episodes, good old Cafe Esperanto. Uh, but um, as far as uh, real activities, it was go to the coffee shop and then spin some records and drink some beer and hit Whataburger. Whataburger, not sponsoring the show this week. So when I got to college, my playing uh, slowed down. Uh, musical instrument wise, uh, because the cost of the equipment can get high and heavy. And, and that's actually when I found magics. Now, here's the thing. This is not a commercial for them. Uh, they don't sponsor the show. And like I said, there's plenty of other programs out there for you to, uh, to assist you in your journey. Um, and they all work and they all are based on the same foundation uh, on, on most sound engineering programs. You know, I've tried Fruity Loops, Sonar, Cakewalk, and I always come back to Magic, mainly because it is the first program I tried. And it's one I'm the most comfortable with. Now, if you are uh, use, if you want to use another program out there, Cakewalk is really good, and it's really easy to use. Fruity Loops is a fantastic program that a lot of people do use. So by all means, check them out for yourself. Uh, they're not that expensive. I think Cakewalk is right around the same price as Magic, about 60 bucks. Fruity Loops you can get for free, but then you got to buy packs of different loops there for yourself. And so you can use that uh, for yourself. You can do the same thing with GarageBand and then buy add-ons for that for yourself. So like I said earlier, uh, this episode is going to be doing uh, double duty uh, for me. I'm going to, I'm creating the music uh, behind my new podcast, Gray Heroes. And uh, the structure uh, for that music uh, is going to be different from a regular song. Okay, that, that structure for that music is going to be for a podcast, more for an audio drama. Uh, versus a regular song. Uh, the changes that you may want to uh, to do is you may not to, want to you may not want to repeat the loops for as long as I do. Uh, and the music serves the script versus the music being the script. When you're doing your own song, the music is your script. So you can think of it as a writer. When you're making music, you're the musician. You're the, you're writing the story right there. Now, if you want to add lyrics to it, that's your own thing. Uh, but there's a lot of music out there that's just inter instrumental. A lot of the house music that I used to listen to um, had very minimal lyrics. You know, mostly you know, get up and dance and you know, rock your body, and and that was about it. That was about the depth of it. We weren't going for intellectual stimulation. We were going for physical stimulation when we were doing that music. So um, think of it like that. The intellectual side will be in how you create that music versus the lyrics in that music but hey if you want to put very intellectual lyrics in there by all means knock it out of the ballpark um but first before we go into any of this um let's hear a little bit from our sponsor gaggle pod 
Hey, this is Timothy Kimo O'Brien, head instigator at KDOI Podcasting. You know, we create more than we consume every other week, and we want to create with you. So check us out on our website, kdoipodcasting.com. Email is at kdoipodcasting at gmail.com. And the Twitter is at kdoi underscore podcasting. I want to thank you for the download that you just did, for the subscription that you just made, and for sharing this podcast with your friends. So thank you for creating more than you consume with us here at KDOI Podcasting. KDOI is a proud member of the Gagopod Network. Gagopod, a place for storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard. Learn how to create your next podcast at gagopod.com. Okay. Hey, thank you, Gagopod, for sponsoring us here. It's a great organization to be with, a great network to be with. And we just added on uh, uh, Garbled Twistery, which is a fantastic podcast about history. And it's really fun to listen to. And they do a lot of music in that. And it's kind of, it reminds me of musical theater a little bit. But check out Garbled Twistery and check out all the uh, shows that we have on Gagopod. All right. Let's get our ears dirty. I like to start with a good drum line. Why? Well, um, I like to have that be the base of the foundation of what I'm building in the song. And, and that's pretty much, this pretty much for me is, uh, sets the mood for the song, you know, how it's going to drive, uh, drive the rest of the whole song. Uh, so an up-tempo beat means an up-tempo song. And for our project, I uh, chose from Magic's uh, Disco House Volume 8 Library. Yes, they have a library dedicated to Disco House. And uh, they have at least eight volumes, if not more. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of loops that you have access to on this. So uh, whatever you're wanting to do in this, uh, it's going to affect you a different way. By all means, take a look at them. Um, they're, they, they go from house to rock to... Uh, movie uh, music to country to jazz um, to ambient to uh, kind of chill house chillax stuff so this one is coming from disco house and let's look at the drum beat on this one okay now as you can hear it's not a single drum uh, it has some extra stuff added into it. Yeah, you have some tambourine in there, a little funk guitar added to it. No worries. There's at least 100 different drum loops in this particular library to choose from. Uh, if you don't like this one, you've got 99 more to choose from. So it, this is why it can take so long. You have so much choice that you can utilize for yourself. All right? Be cautious of that. Now, the main thing for me in choosing a drum beat is how it drives the song. I had no idea as soon as I started this project uh, what was going to come after the drum beat. I usually start with the drums and then the bass and then the synths and then other special things that I want to do. And I try to match everything with the uh, initial feeling and drive of the drums. Now, I'm open to change that at any point. I can change, I can change the drums. I can go uh, through a, a different verse or I can go through a break and then go into a, a new part of the song with a whole different drum beat. You're free to do that. You're not stuck with one drum beat throughout the whole song. You can change it up. And even in uh, the uh, the library that you can choose from of these hundred different drum beats, there are different kind of uh, families or uh, sections in there that uh, you can use different uh, drum loops that are closely related to each other. They sound a lot alike, but uh, they have little uh, minute differences here and there where... Something may have, you know, the tambourine and a uh, funk guitar behind it. Others may just have just the drums. Others may have the drums and the funk guitar. Others may have the drums and the tambourine behind it, but no funk guitar. So it just really depends on what you want that to be for yourself. Now, I'm not a drummer, and I don't play one on TV. But usually, uh, I like to start with uh, that drum, uh, because I'm a rhythm section guy, and that works for me now. Let's move over to the bass. And I usually try to bring the volume of the bass uh, up and uh, the drums down just so that I can equalize them out. And this program, easily, you can do that uh, simply by uh, touching the, by clicking on the loop. 
and uh, there'll be a line in the middle of that loop and you can adjust the volume with that line and it's you can all obviously uh, go the, there's menus to go to and there's tutorials to follow on that but that's one of the things i like about it i don't have to always go into the menu bars that are up there i can use that loop and stay on that loop and work that loop right then and there on the workspace so yeah, definitely read those tutorials uh, to know better how to do that but for me, I know that drums are easier to hear versus a bass. And usually the only people that uh, hear the bass or notice the bass are other bass players. And I've got a lot of friends that are bass players. So I know that they're listening to the bass. And they're listening to this podcast going, where's the bass? Where's the bass? Well, I, I'm turning up the bass. So that way everyone is happy, okay? So, um, you know, like I said, I used to play bass uh, in the rhythm section. So uh, let's listen to the bass line here. Now it's very funky and, ma and I think it matches well with the drums. Okay, now here we go. We're going to put the bass together with the drums and we're going to see how well they mesh together. Now remember, uh, in the bass uh, program, you've got seven pitches to use. I decided to use A minor just because uh, it's more sinister and a little bit more funky and a bit dangerous, much like DJ Vulture, my alter ego, and my DJ name that I used to go by here. So let's take a listen to that. Okay, that was excellent. Now, being a child of the 80s, uh, since really, uh, synthesizers really came into the forefront at that time, and it pretty much changed rock and roll and dance music. And some would argue for the better, and others would uh, be for the worst. Think hair bands and really bad new wave uh, bands uh, for that. We're, we're going to apologize. Uh, it just, you know, those of us in the 80s, Generation X, we're going to apologize for that. Now, I do like uh, some synths in my music. And again, uh, you've got a huge variety of choices uh, to, to choose from uh, in, in Magics. For this song, again, I'm, I'm looking to the drums to guide me where I want to go. And I know you drum players are very happy about this. Hey, the drums are driving everything. The drums are in charge. Okay, yeah, the drums are in charge. But, uh, you know, I've been known to start music off with just synths and leave drums out entirely. It's up to you. So if you are more of the synth kind of per you know, synthesizer kind of person, if you want to relive the 80s, by all means, you can do that in this program. So uh, for this demo, I wanted everything to be very cohesive and everyone to get along. Can't everyone just get along? Can't you drum players get along with us synthesizer players? All right, so let's listen to this. Synth. All right, you can hear that this synth is very bouncy. Now, it doesn't have the drive of the drums, okay? The drums, da boom, da boom, da boom, da boom. They're pushing it through it. They're pushing it through. But it does provide a nice contrast to the drums. Think of it like a recipe, you know, like a sweet and sour chicken. Oh, sweet and sour chicken. Oh, man. Oh, I, I need some Chinese right now. Yep. Food and music is a great combo. And many times I've had to pull late nighters with some sweet and sour chicken or pork. Or you know what? My favorite, General Tso's chicken. And then you have to have some crab meat rangoo with that. And, you know, some nice brown rice. Oh, my. Okay. All right. A little hot and sour soup. Oh, egg drop soup. Mm. Okay, I digress. Okay. Let's hear how the synth fits in nicely with the rhythm section. Excellent. Now, you can hear it doesn't dominate. All the pieces of the song are going together well. And they're complementing each other. No one's taking the lead. And for right now, that's fine. We can build our layers until we get to the uh, main part of the song, okay? Now, at some point, you're going to want something to take the lead, uh, to take the rhythm, uh, to, you know, to take the song and, and run with it. And maybe you'll break it out into a solo. However you want to do that, by all means, knock that out for yourself. But uh, for me, I'm just in, in the purposes of this demo. I just want everything to be very nice and cohesive with each other. I don't want anything to step in front of anything else. I want you to hear everything. That's why we're breaking it up like we're breaking it up. I want you to uh, see how well all this can mesh together. Now, I always like to add in a little something special uh, to each of my songs. And um, for me, uh, one of the easiest things to do is drop in a sequencer. 
Now, the sequencer and magics, I, I think of those like backing vocals. So I think the synthesizers are the lead vocals, and then the uh, sequences are backing vocals. And for me, they, they actually fill in the holes that are in that structure. So they can uh, be put in there, you know, between uh, solos to keep the music going. So let's go ahead and listen to the sequence first, and then we'll listen to it uh, into uh, what's going on with the whole song. All right, so that, uh, that pitch is a little bit high, and I'm using it to counteract the depth of the bass and drums. Uh, you know, again, we're, we're evening things out with this. All right. Now, if you want s certain things to stick out, then you can do it not even by playing with the volume. You can just do it by what you're adding into the song, what you're taking out. Maybe, you know, if we want to go on, we want to stay on the high end, we take out the bass or we take out the drums and leave in the bass because the bass is driving the song pretty well with the drums. So either one could drive the song, but then we have the accessories with the synthesizer and the sequence. Let's hear what everything sounds like together. All right, now we have the beginning of a song. Now this could be an intro, it could be a whole verse, whatever you want it to be. Now all the instruments are in the same pitch, A minor. In this next bit that I'm going to do, I'm going to change up the pitch and we're going to add in a nice little surprise for you, okay? So uh, we're sitting in A minor. It's a harmonic. Um, it's a, they call it a pitch in uh, Magics. And you usually have seven of them. So everything I've been playing to you so far has been in A minor. Now we're going to change that up and we're going to pop it up. A pit, uh, we're going to pop it up uh, two levels and two pitches, and then we're going to pop it right back to our regular pitch, okay? So as you uh, heard in there, uh, we did uh, those pitch changes. And most instruments in Magix uh, do have uh, about seven different pitch changes or harmonics that they can do. And yeah, that wasn't my uh, voice in there, naturally. Uh, that was the program. And they do have a lot of vocals in there that you can use. A lot of them are kind of cheesy. And this, uh, this company is uh, based out of Germany. So a lot of their stuff, uh, they are uh, doing vocals on what they think rap or dance music is all about. Um, it works in a pinch. Some of it does. Others of it is kind of cheesy. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you there. It is a little bit cheesy there for you, but it's okay. You can use, uh, you can use it. I've, I've used, uh, the uh, vocals that they uh, provide in there a lot. Um, when, I, when I do gray heroes, I'll, uh, you know, I'm making the music behind it and then it'll be my voice that I'll be adding in there. So I won't be using their vocals uh, for that. Maybe not. Might. A little bit. If I if I find something in there that I, that I like, I'll use it. All right. So um, in the show notes here, I've included two screenshots of what the project looks like when it's done. Uh, one one screenshot uh, for how uh, Grey Heroes looks like, uh, sans uh, the vocals. And uh, as you can see, I put space uh, between uh, each section to you know help it be a little bit easier for when I do my audio processing. And when I'm mixing this all together, yours are going to look a lot different uh, and it'll be more streamlined when you put yours together. Hopefully you notice something else that I did in there. Silence. Yeah, silence is music as well. You can play games with your audience, make them think that the song is over or just give them a rest. If you've got them on their feet dancing, please remember, if you're doing dance music, you can pump up the audience uh, until you drop, but then... You got you to give those dancers a break at some point. And it provides a nice counterpoint to 
the noise that you're providing. Silence is a part of music. We use silence all the time in music. And again, it's a, it's a counterpoint. It's to bring the mood down, bring, to, uh, bring the tempo down, bring the uh, feeling down uh, to where it needs to go. Because you can't always pump up, 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 and up, and up. There's got to be a point where you come down. And every song has to end. This isn't like, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants, where this is the song that never ends. Come sing it with me, friends. I'll say it once again. This is the... See, we don't do that. No, no, no. I have twin girls. I can do that. You know, they're young. Um, They don't watch that yet. I can do that. You can't do that because no one's going to listen to that song because we all have our lives to do and we have to go to sleep at some point. So use silence by all means. Drop that in there. I think uh, Paul Simon, Sound of Silence. There you go. He's much a better musician than I am. Another thing to talk about here is beats per minute or BPM. Again, Magic has different BPMs that you can use depending on the style of music that you want. Uh, with uh, this the, this demo that we did here, the BPM is 125 uh, beats per minute. And that's usually standard dance music uh, there for you. Rock is usually about 80. Some rap is can be about... Uh, I'm sorry, rock is usually about 90. Some rap is about 80 beats per minute. Uh, speed metal and techno, usually about 130, 140. Folks, speed kills, okay? Speed kills. No one can dance to that stuff. Um, and if you can, you're probably slam dancing. And really, is that dancing? That's possibly another episode that we can bring up later on, dancing. I don't know how we're going to do that on a podcast. Keep in mind uh, the music that you're creating. A loop can sound great, but if the other loops in the song are faster or slower, it's going to be noticeable, and it may not be noticeable for the right reasons. So think about, uh, you know, a rock. You know, a good rock song is a nice four-four time uh, time time signature there. If you want to go faster than that or slower than that, think about the mood of your song, and that'll dictate what BPM you use, what beats per minute that you're going to use. Okay, so I talked a lot about this demo. Um, I did for you. Play a little uh, piece from uh, Grey Heroes Without the Vocals. Uh, now, the music that I'm making for this is uh, is transitioning and setting the move for the section of the story uh, that you'll hear. Hence, you're going to hear different styles. So different sections have different styles. So it's kind of like I'm writing you know, four or five different songs for one episode, which is fine with me. I love uh, using this kind of stuff. I, I geek out at this. So the, the beauty of it is is what you're going to be hearing, it's all under the same family or library in Magics with the same BP, uh, BPM. So you, you're going to hear a bunch of different styles in this, and then you're going to go, wow, and that's all in the same family, same file uh, structure, and same BPM. So uh, first, I'm going to give you a little promo uh, for Gray Heroes, and then we'll go into that. Do you like your heroes with a little more than two dimensions? How about some dirt underneath their fingernails? Tired of heroes in tights or white hats? Come on over to Gray Heroes, where no one gets out clean. People who play by their own rules. Take a listen at grayheroes.com. Let those pretty fly boys in capes go back to bed. Gray Heroes, just a hair over on this side of the law. Gray Heroes, no one gets out clean. New stories every two weeks. Sponsored by the Gagopod Network. Find out more at gagopod.com. For storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard. Learn how to create your next podcast at gagopod.com. Dot com.
Okay, so you got a little uh, primer, uh, a little teaser there for Gray Heroes. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the music that you heard for Gray Heroes. And just think, if you're hearing that kind of music, what are the words going to be like? That'll be crazy. You know what the voice is going to be like. It's going to be my voice, kids. With music like that, I, I think uh, your, your interest is a little bit peaked. I know mine is. Uh, also in the show notes, what I'm doing here for you is I'm uh, showing you in, uh, for those of you that are interested in doing podcasting, I'm showing you what my audacity uh, looks like. I use audacity when I'm doing all my mix downs and uh, for my podcast uh, for right now, I'm probably going to switch over to Hindenburg in February of next year when they have their big sale. Um, usually it's about a hundred bucks, but I think they have a sale for it. It's like five bucks. I'm like, eh, why, why pay a hundred when I can pay five and I can wait for it and go on sale, but it's a digital uh, audio workstation is what I use. And I'm putting in the screenshots in there. So that way you can see what it looks like. So when I listen to a podcast, that's kind of what I, I'm seeing in my mind's eye. And when I'm listening to my podcast, that's kind of what I'm seeing in my mind's eye. You know, I have my little line going across from right to left, showing me how much, uh, you know, kind of uh, counting down the time for me on that. So I hoped, I hope that you have enjoyed this week's episode of Soothing the Savage Breast. Make sure that you tune in and tell a friend every two weeks about our little podcast here at KDOI Podcasting. Remember, we'd like to, you to share your projects here with us. So give this, a, uh, give this a try. If you've got music that you've created on your own on a digital audio workstation, toss it over to us. Uh, I'd love to play it uh, on the show here. Heck, it might even be new intro music uh, for us. You never know. But remember, at KDOI Podcasting, we create more than we consume. You can email us at kdoipodcasting at gmail.com. We're on the Twitter at kdoi underscore podcasting. And our website is kdoipodcasting.com, where we do create more than we consume. And we would like you to let us know how we're doing for you and to share these, uh, share these projects with you. We definitely want to hear from you. So make it a point to uh, pop on out here. I am your host, Timothy Kim O'Brien also known as DJ Vulture, all these years. You thought it was two different people. It's one and the same person, folks. And I'm proud to uh, play some bump out music here for you. And we'll see you in two weeks. you think about it yeah nature is singing to us through the crickets sometimes you need to take a shotgun and sing louder than the crickets uh, scare them off